But a man with a reverent attitude towards nature, yes. Well, this is Floyd Woodback, and Floyd grew up in Sheffield, Massachusetts. He was a woodsman. He had the fastest mind of anyone I have ever met. And uh, Floyd was a very sickly uh, boy with asthma. He spent probably more time in the woods uh, where the woodsmen were, were uh, working than he did actually in school. In any case, he there wasn't anything that he couldn't do with an axe. As an adult, I can tell you that. He knew as much about plants and wildflowers uh, and wild vegetables and things of that sort. Uh, it was just uh, a wonder. And we became very good friends. And he, we worked hand in glove on the place Sheffield. Uh, that place owes itself really to Floyd. He never charged anyone more money than would keep him in food and in tools and uh, an occasional book or whatever. Uh, it was a, a, a different attitude towards money and life. Floyd said to me at one point, if you want to be a success, build a house on a hill. Let's talk about the painting. Uh, I did several paintings of him. I did many paintings of his tools, uh, many still lifes. He had tools that he knew what they were for, but most people by that time didn't. A chime knife, a barking spud, well, people don't know what that is. All kinds of tools that he had and collected. He had a wonderful eye for them, and he had used them. And he could go in, I'd go in with him to a second-hand uh, store, uh, Mrs. Griff in Canaan, Connecticut, and there'd be a box of tools there that you could have for a dollar or two, uh, and he'd pick it up and find some wonderful things, chisels and all kinds of things, strange and wonderful things. And we worked slowly on the place, and he really taught me how to work. You had a good meal at breakfast. You were up at, at uh, 5.30 or so, and you had a good meal at breakfast, and then you went to work. You'd work for a couple of hours, let's say, hauling brush, and then you'd move some rocks, and then you'd go and hunt uh, uh, the barberry, which was taking over the universe, or the gooseberry, which was causing the white pine blister, which was destroying the pine trees. You spelled yourself out. You had a good meal at noon. You went back to work. And if you paced yourself this way, at the end of the day, you were basically refreshed at the end of the day when you had a good meal at night. And then you went to bed in due course and got up. And it's wonderful to find somebody who knows how to work and enjoys the work and paces it out. He would walk like this. And so he was going at the end of the day when I was about ready to stay for the next two days in bed. Uh, Kirsten Roloff and her husband, Fred Bjorn Bjornsson, stayed with us. They were teaching at Jacob's Pillow, so they spent some time with us in the barn. Fred Bjorn, who is the, the, absolutely the greatest single balletic mime I have ever seen, uh, Fred Bjorn came and he was nuts over this painting and he said, I could tell everything about this man through his body. And that was very pleasing to me. And I hadn't thought at the time, but I've thought since, that there are great portraits painted by uh, Aikens, for example, none better how I admire beyond all description. But I can remember the first time I saw Aikens, I think it was up uh, where the uh, Spanish, uh, Hispanic Museum is up there on 145th Street. I saw the concert singer and a group of other paintings. And I remember saying to myself, uh, what is the matter with this man? Why doesn't he give me the body underneath the clothes? The head is wonderful, the hands are wonderful, the feet are wonderful, the drapery is wonderful, the garments are wonderful, but where the heck is the body moving? You can tell if you look at this body that he is asthmatic uh, by the way he holds himself. It's Robert Beverly Hale saying, X-ray eyes, you look through and you paint uh, what you see underneath. You have to see the skeleton through the flesh, through the clothing. And what makes this different, I think, is that there is no idealization in it in, in the common accepted sense of the word. 
Uh, this again is a portrait of an individual, particular person. We've seen Mimi as a nude, clothes off. We see Floyd here as the first uh, uh, really major portrait that came right after Mimi, time-wise, of, of, of the clothed figure.